Hey guys, this is going. This is Watch from the MW Technology Channel on YouTube, and in this video, we're doing a direct comparison between the current generation Apple iPod Touch and the Samsung Galaxy 4.2 inch player. Okay, so let's get right into this comparison. The first thing that we're going to look at is the design and form factor of these two devices. In terms of physical dimension, the Samsung player has a width of 2.6 inches, a height of 4.89 inches, and a thickness of 0.35 inches. On the other side, the fourth generation iPod Touch has a width of 2.32 inches, a height of 4.4 inches, and a thickness of 0.28 inches. Now in terms of weight, we should mention that the iPod Touch is just a bit lighter than the Samsung Player weighing 3.6 ounces versus the Samsung's weight which is just under 4 ounces. So when we take a look at the front of the iPod Touch, you'll notice that the only button is at the bottom of the device which is the home button and at the very top of the device you have a front facing camera and most of the front of the device is just the screen. At the bottom of the iPod you have a standard 3.5mm headphone jack and the iPod 30 pin dock connection. On the left hand side of the device you have the volume controls and the top of the device simply just has the power standby button. And there are no buttons or ports on the right hand side of the iPod Touch. And at the very back of the iPod Touch you'll notice that there are no opening, it's just a plain aluminum finish which will eventually get a million scratches as soon as you even look at it. But there is no way where you can access or change the battery, you have to send it to Apple. And of course there are no user ways to expand the solid state memory inside. Now when looking at the front of the Samsung, you'll notice that there's not a lot of buttons that you have to deal with. Basically at the bottom of the device you have three buttons. The center button is a large home button. On the very left hand side you have a capacitive button for a menu feature and on the very right hand side you have a capacitive button for going back. One of the notable advantages that you have on the Samsung player is that it has a dual speaker setup, a left and a right speaker or a top and bottom speaker depending on the orientation. Lastly when you take a look at the top hand right of the device you'll see that there is a front facing camera. When we take a look at the very bottom of the device, you'll see a simple 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and a mini USB port for charging and transferring data. When we take a look at the right hand side of the device, you'll see that there is a power standby button followed by your up down volume buttons. Additionally, there are no main buttons or ports on the top or left of the device. Now lastly, when you're looking at the back of the device, you'll notice that you can remove the back and access the user replaceable battery. And there is also a micro SD expansion slot where you can upgrade the memory up to 32 gigs. And that right there is a huge advantage when we start comparing it to the iPod Touch. Now let's take this moment to really dive into some of the technical specifications of both these two devices. Now why don't we do this comparison in a more head-to-head -head style. We'll have the Samsung on the left hand side and the iPod on the right hand side. So let's start with the processors that are in these two devices. So inside the Samsung we have a Texas Instruments OMAP3630 single core processor clocked in at 1 GHz. Now on the iPod Touch side we have a single core 1 GHz ARM Cortex-A8 processor which has actually been underclocked to 800 MHz. Now overall you're not going to find a huge difference in terms of processor performance. They really perform very similarly in most circumstances. The real difference that you're going to find in the performance will be dependent upon the RAM. And this is mainly due to the fact that the Samsung Player has 512 megabytes of RAM versus the iPod Touch only having 256 megabytes of RAM. Now when we talk about storage capacity, you'll notice that both of the devices have different options. Now the Samsung Galaxy Player only has 8 gigabytes of internal storage, but the real key to all this is that you can use the internal micro SD expansion slot to upgrade your memory up to 32 gigabytes in addition to your 8 gigs. Now when we start looking at the storage options for the iPod Touch, it's really dependent upon which version you select. Currently Apple sells three versions of the iPod Touch, the 8, 32, and 64 gig, and as we discussed earlier, there are no ways to expand the internal memory. Both of the same devices use the same 802.11n Wi-Fi system and both have GPS. The only difference is that the Samsung has a newer implementation of Bluetooth. It uses Bluetooth 3.0 versus the iPod Touch using the older 2.1 version of Bluetooth. 
Now in terms of media compatibility, you'll notice that the Samsung has more variety in terms of formats that it can natively play. It can definitely play most of the file formats that you would ever want to use on a mobile or desktop device. Now it is a different story when we take a look at the compatibility of the iPod Touch. Of course, it should be noted that the iPod Touch's compatibility can be widened if you use third-party applications or jailbreak the device, but the native support for different file formats is quite limiting when we start comparing it to the Samsung player. Now these days, one of the most important features of a mobile device is the screen itself. Both these devices have capacitive touch screens, so let's see which screen is the best. The Samsung Player screen measures 4.2 inches diagonally, and it has a resolution of 800 by 480. The iPod Touch, on the other hand, has a smaller 3.5 inch display, but it has the mighty Retina display to boast about with the resolution of 960 by 640. And this quickly becomes the battle of screen size versus pixel density. Now even though Samsung has the larger screen, its resolution is actually quite a lot lower than the iPod Touch, meaning the level of sharpness and clarity that you experience using the iPod Touch is definitely superior to what you experience with the Samsung player. That being said, I do have to admit that the Samsung definitely has very vibrant and saturated colors that does produce some great looking images. Now let's move on to the camera side of things. Both of these two devices have a front and rear facing camera, but the similarities actually end there. The Samsung, as you can see over here, delivers some decent looking images if you have enough light, and it has a maximum resolution of 1600 by 1200. The fourth generation iPod Touch, on the other hand, really doesn't perform that well in terms of stills. The stills have a maximum resolution of 960 by 720, and when you start comparing these two stills side by side, you'll notice how much better the Samsung is overall in terms of sharpness and clarity, in addition to having, of course, the higher resolution. Now, interestingly, the results actually flip when we start looking at the video features of these two cameras. When we take a look at the footage off the Samsung, you'll notice how low the resolution is in comparison to the iPod Touch. When shooting video, the Samsung has a maximum resolution of 640x480, which is quite disappointing when looking at the stills functionality of this camera. Now for video, the iPod Touch is definitely the better device. It records a 1280x720 HD image, which you can see from this actual footage is miles beyond the Samsung's video camera. Now both these two devices have really similar front facing cameras. They both have the same image quality and they both do the same in terms of video performance as well. Both of the front facing cameras have a maximum resolution of 640 by 480. So really both of the front facing cameras are quite equal in all regards. Now in terms of user experience, both of these devices do fairly well. Both do a great job in terms of surfing the web. Although when we do a direct comparison of loading different web pages, you'll notice the Samsung has a slight advantage of loading pages just a couple of milliseconds faster than the iPod Touch. Both devices are great at media consumption, such as watching videos, listening to music, viewing pictures, and reading books. They both have a great selection in applications with the iPod using the App Store and the Samsung Player using the Android Marketplace. One slight advantage you have with the larger screen is that if you do a lot of typing with the virtual keyboard is that it gives you a little bit more room to type. However, I did find that the keyboard was not as responsive as in the iPod Touch. So just to make the decision a little bit more easier, why don't we take a look at each of the devices and see what they do really well. I think some of the positive aspects of the Samsung Galaxy Player is definitely the 4.2 inch screen. Even though it's not as high resolution as the iPod, it's still nice to have that large screen. The 512 megabytes of RAM really does help out the device quite a bit, and it's twice as much as what you get with the iPod Touch. We should remember that it has Bluetooth 3.0, it has expandable memory, a user replaceable battery is great. Furthermore, you have better media compatibility on the Samsung, as well as a better high resolution still camera than the iPod touch and stereo speakers. Now looking at some of the advantages of the iPod touch, of course you have the retina display, which is one of the best screens you'll ever find in any multimedia device. Then of course we have the great 720p HD rear facing camera for video, which is miles beyond the video camera features of the Samsung. The iPod touch also has the latest version of the iOS version 5.1.1. It has the better battery life. It's available in black and white. And lastly, it has slightly better build quality. So the last thing that we'll talk about is just about price and value. Both these devices retail for about $200. 
But of course, it's up to you in terms of what you like best and what's going to suit your personal preferences. And really, just to sum up, both these devices are really fantastic. And really, either one would be a good choice. But other than that, guys, that's really it. If you have any questions about anything I talked about in this video, make sure to leave a comment down below. And let me know what you guys think has the best value. Both of these devices are fairly similar. I think it, it really depends upon your personal needs and personal preferences. But uh, they're both really great devices. And if you like this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. But thank you so much for watching and we'll see you later. Take care. Hi everyone, this is Watt from the MW Technology Channel and in this video we're doing a quick look and unboxing the 4.2 inch Samsung Galaxy.